Welcome into 9 News at Noon. Right now we're following some breaking news. The Doug Coe Sheriff's Office is investigating a homicide in Highlands Ranch in the area of South University and Wildcat Reserve Parkway. This was reported just before 830 this morning. We know one person has died and someone is in custody. We reached out to the Sheriff's Office and we're waiting on a call back. We're in for another hot day across our state, taking a live look at Elitch Gardens right now where it's looking just a little bit busy. Pool day, yeah, good idea on a day like today. And a live look from Lookout Mountain. We're over 90 degrees already, and it's only going to get hotter. Greg Perez in the house today, breaking down everything you need to know about the heat. It's going to feel similar to yesterday. Uh, yeah, maybe a touch cooler, just yeah. a touch. High temperatures for today, 95, 96 degrees in Denver, and that is nothing to, uh, compared to what's going down in South Central and Southeastern Colorado. At the noon hour, we're already at 99 degrees apiece in Pueblo and Lamar, 94 degrees in Lyman, 93 in Denver. Now, I think we're, we're going to make it to 96 degrees, but it could be a little bit cooler than that, depending on how much cloud cover we do get. So we do have heat advisories in a effect for our friends down towards the south central portion of the state. You take a trip down the I-25 corridor of Pueblo, Walsenburg, down through Trinidad. Up until 9 o'clock this evening, we have a heat advisory in effect up to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Certainly a possibility considering Pueblo is already at 99 degrees right now. Clear skies as shown by our HG Doppler radar. A few scattered isolated showers out towards the northern mountains. And from the morning into the afternoon hours, here come some of those clouds and possibly even an isolated storm or two. It starts out towards Winter Park, Georgetown and Frisco eventually moves into the Denver metro area, say between four and six o'clock. But this is going to be one of those showers and storms that really has all bark and no bite. High temperatures for today, otherwise 96 degrees in Denver, 94 degrees apiece in Broomfield and Arvada. A little bit cooler as you're getting into the high country, but for tomorrow, high temperatures a little bit cooler in the upper 80s as we're awaiting a cold front and a much more active second half of the work week. I'll give the details coming up on that in just a few minutes. All right, Greg, thank you so much. We'll check in with you soon. This morning, this morning, Clear Creek leaders accepted the resignation of Sheriff Rick Albers. They previously called him out for how his department responded to and investigated the death of Christian Glass. Glass died last summer. He was shot and killed by a deputy during a mental health crisis. In May, the county and other law enforcement agencies agreed to a $19 million settlement with the Glass family, including significant promises for police reform and apologies. Glass's family and county leaders say they did not think Sheriff Albers apology uh, went far enough. Mm -hmm. Two county leaders called him to step aside, mm -hmm. saying he has not accepted enough responsibility. Albers announced last week he would retire after 43 years of service. Denver Mayor Mike Johnston promised to address homelessness during his campaign. During his first full day on the job, he declared a state of emergency to address the problem. What we know is the issue of people living unhoused on the streets is the most significant issue the city faces right now. It is a human rights challenge because we know we have people who are right now uh, living and dying on the streets of Denver. We know we have people who need access to support and services who can't get them. Uh, we know it is a public health challenge. Johnson's emergency declaration will activate the Emergency Operations Center. His goal is to get 1,000 people off the street by the end of the year. Monday, as he was being sworn in, there were protesters outside, making sure their voice on those living unhoused in Denver was heard. We need housing. We don't need tiny homes. We don't need SOS camps. We need housing. Today is the start. Today is the start of a process to dedicate city resources, city personnel, the leadership of the city council and of the agencies against that target. We will be looking at an all of the above strategy on housing. That means we are looking to get, build on many of the successes the city has used already. We'll have a lot more from Johnston and his emergency plan coming up today on 9 News at 4. Happening in about three hours, the woman accused of carrying out Colorado's biggest casino heist is expected back in court. Sabrina Eddy is accused of stealing half a million dollars from the Monarch, Monarch Casino Vault back in March. Originally, she told investigators she took the money because she thought her boss told her to. Now, investigators say Eddie took the money after threats from people who knew her late husband. Another man is in jail tied to the heist. Eddie's hearing set to start at 2 o'clock.
Aurora City Council has voted to suspend its mutual aid agreement with Denver police as they fight over who pays for lawsuits. Those suits related to policing at the 2020 George Floyd protest in Denver. Aurora say Denver police asked for help during those protests. Aurora officers are named in four civil lawsuits related to how police handled the crowds. Aurora Mayor Mike Hoffman sponsored this resolution, saying Denver should pay to defend those officers or settle the lawsuits. Several council members asked Hoffman to wait and try reaching out. Since Denver just inaugurated new Mayor Mike Johnston, Kaufman was not interested. Dead. DPD previously told us ending this agreement would not affect its day to day operations. Aurora Police Chief Art Acevedo said the same thing and added he is confident officers would not be impacted. Kaufman's proposal only suspends the agreement until Aurora receives assurances from Denver that they will be responsible, leaving room for reconciliation. Former President Donald Trump says he's the target of criminal probe into efforts to overturn the 2020 election. It's a sign Trump may soon be charged by the special counsel. In his Truth Social post, Trump said he he was given four days to report to the grand jury. Individuals given a target letter typically get the chance to appear before a grand jury to defend themselves before charges are brought. It is unlikely Trump will choose to appear. He got the letter earlier this year from Smith before being indicted. The investigation into the mishandling of classified documents. The grand jury investigating 2020 election interference is meeting Tuesday in D.C. A man and his dog are back on land after three months at sea. The crew of a Mexican tuna boat found Timothy Shattuck and his dog Bella 1,200 miles from land. They were brought on board and given food and water. That boat is expected to be back in Mexico today. Shattuck told an Australian news outlet his time at sea was, quote, hell, and he needs rest, but he is otherwise okay. Now, right now, it's still unclear exactly why the man and his dog were stranded at sea. We do expect to hear more from him later today.